Okay, what is up everyone? Ollie here. So we have an interesting video. And what was that? I don't even know what that was. <laughs> <Yeah>. Hello. <laughs> but anyway, what is up everyone? Ollie here. We have a keyboard comparison sort of video. Um, going through some of the keyboards that I have and basically trying to explain why, or I guess, what is the difference between a hundred dollar keyboard, which is what I have here, uh, compared to a high-end $400, $500 mechanical keyboard, something that you would custom make, whatever. So bear with me though, because I'm not a mechanical keyboard connoisseur. I don't really know <laughs> too much about mechanical keyboards. I'm learning as I go along, I'm trying to figure out, you know, what makes them so special and stuff. So if there's anything I get wrong, let me know in the comments, because I'm sure there are a few of you who are mechanical keyboard experts. So yeah, I'm always looking to I guess expand my knowledge, you could say, when it comes to mechanical keyboards, because it's an interesting but very expensive hobby, but it's also quite fun. So let's get into this video. I also wanted to give a quick plug to this desk mat that you see here. This is a ULX desk mat from my own store. Make sure to check it out. Helps me sort of support the channel and hopefully I can buy a Ferrari one day. So, you know, just buy enough desk mats and I'll be able to buy a Ferrari. All right, cool, thanks. So how do mechanical keyboards actually work? So I have some notes here, so I'm just gonna read them out because it just makes it easier rather than me having it off the top of my head. Um, mechanical keyboards work by using physical switches beneath the keys. These switches are comprised of multiple moving parts, the hard plastic stem containing two metal contact pads and a spring beneath it. When a key is pushed, the stem is moved down compressing the spring. This then allows the two metal contacts to touch, sending an electrical signal to your computer to let it know that a key has been pressed. This is the essence of a mechanical keyboard. So when you have like a normal keyboard, like, let me get this one, like an Apple Magic Keyboard. So this doesn't have mechanical switches. A lot of people like this keyboard. I like this keyboard. So let's actually bring this into, into camera on the other cam so you can see it like so. So yeah, mechanical keyboard above, we have the Keychron K1 here, and then we have the Apple Magic Keyboard. So regular keyboards don't use physical switches beneath the keys. They usually use a membrane, which is made from rubber or silicon. This basically happened because it was a cheaper way to make keyboards. Manufacturers wanted to make cheaper keyboards. Um, so using a membrane is much cheaper than using actual mechanical switches. Regular keyboards like this one also have a lot less travel. Actually, I should turn this off because it's still connected to my computer over there. Um, but yeah, regular keyboards have a lot less travel because of it. Now, travel is a nice thing to have, obviously. You know, having a lot more travel in your keys is much nicer because it gives you that tactility. But because I've been using the Apple Magic Keyboard for so long, for how many years now, I've actually gotten used to the to the short travel of the magical of the magical keyboard. It's not very magical, but of the Apple Magic Keyboard. Because the movement is a lot less, there's also fewer things actually happening, which obviously means fewer parts. That's also why it's cheaper. So let's go through the keyboards that I have, because I have four keyboards here. You can only see two, but I actually have four because I have a nice special one that I'm going to show you in this box. But yeah, we have the Keychron K1. Then we have the Apple Magic Keyboard, but I also have Logi MX Keys. So this is the smaller MX Keys. Um, this is actually a really good keyboard and it's one I made a video on recently. Um, if you're looking for a Magic Keyboard alternative, this is a pretty good one, but they actually go for the same price. The Keychron, when I paid for it, when I bought it, I think it was $100, but now they've actually come down in price, they are a bit cheaper. So technically, the Keychron is cheaper than these two keyboards, even though it's a mechanical keyboard. So mechanical keyboards have just become so much more popular that they're becoming cheaper to make. And the Keychron keyboard, it's made from aluminum. It's nice. Um, it's not the highest quality thing in the world, but I think it's a really good starting point for people who are interested in mechanical keyboards, people who want to sort of delve into that sort of market. So one of the major features with mechanical keyboards, if you see it as a feature, is that obviously it's a lot more clicky. There's a lot more tactility to them, but they are also quite a bit louder like the Keychron that I have here. It is much louder than say the Apple keyboard. I'll do a quick sound test so you can see what they're like. But yeah, the Apple keyboard is, is a bit quieter and then the MS keys is also quieter than the Keychron as well. But obviously with the MS keys and the Apple Magic keyboard, the movement is just so much less. So if you're someone who really likes the movement, having that tactility, knowing that you've really pressed a key, then the Keychron is why you go for it. It's why you'd go for a mechanical keyboard. When it comes to materials as well, because of their price point, 
they're not going to be the most highest quality things in the world. And it's funny because I'd actually say the Magic Keyboard feels the most premium out of these two, mainly because the keys just feel a bit better finished than the Keychron keys. The great thing is with the Keychron keys, you know, you can take one off and you can easily change them if you want to, so you can have nicer quality keys if that's what you like. Um, same with the MX keys, like, it's, I think it's plastic, isn't it? Is it plastic or it's is it aluminium? Not. It is. Aluminium? The actual enclosure is aluminium yeah. and then okay. the other ripples are plastic. Okay, it's funny because it feels plastic to me. Yeah. And I think it's because the bottom, when, it, when you pick it up, it feels plastic. But let's get into what we actually came here for, the, the big dog, the expensive one, the nice one. Um, we'll move all these keyboards out of the way. So, got a lot of keyboards here. I don't even know where, to, I'm gonna have to put them on the floor. Okay. So this keyboard comes with its own carrying case, which is already a good start. Like, it's a really nice carrying case. Um, and considering how much it is, it, it should really come with a carrying case. You don't want it sort of going around in your backpack, meddling with other stuff. So yeah, it's nice that it comes with a carrying case. This keyboard is by a company called Mode. This is the Mode 65 mechanical keyboard. They also do the 80, and as the name suggests, 65 means it's a 65% layout, and of course their 80 is the 80% layout. So yeah, they have two different sizes, depending on what you like. Mode also have an awesome configurator on their website where you can customize it to your liking. You can choose things like colors, materials, and a bunch of other stuff, so you can customize it just the way you like, have it the way you want. So I had a specific set of requirements when it came to my custom mechanical keyboard. It had to be quiet. I wanted it to be as quiet as possible. It had to have a minimal look, but I didn't want it to be just be all black. So I wanted a gold accent to it as well. I have got a nice brass accent on this. And boy did Mode deliver because this thing is just unreal. It is, I don't even know what's the best way to explain it. I think I think you've got to see it as like the, key, the Magic Keyboard and stuff and these, these other keyboards, $100 keyboards, I like driving around maybe in like a BMW or an Audi or something. This thing is like the Rolls Royce of keyboards. It is absolutely exquisite. It is unreal. Okay, so let's actually get this thing out of the, the carrying case that it comes with. And this thing is heavy. I don't actually have a scale, but I don't even know. This must weigh like two or three kilos. It is absurdly heavy. I mean, just look at this thing. It is quite thick, made from metal. It has that cold feeling to it as well, that metal does. And it's just so heavy. It, it's unreal the weight of this thing. It feels like a quality product. You could kill someone with this. I'm not joking. If, if someone came in and you just needed to hit them with a the keyboard, I'm not joking. You could hit, with, hit them with this. <laughs> you, would, you would do some damage. Um, it has nice rubber feet on the bottom as well. Um, so it doesn't slip around, which is nice. And this back piece here is a brass back piece and it just comes on and off with magnets, which is really nice. Again, such a heavy, heavy piece of brass. I mean, it, it makes sense. Brass is a heavy material, but you just don't expect it to be this heavy. And yeah, it just connects again via magnets. Super, super nice. So if we actually go through the technical specs of this keyboard. So as you can see, this is a black case with a brass back piece. You can get different back pieces if you like. I do also have a black back piece, but I like the brass a lot more. Um, it has Boba U4 silent tactile switches. It has a carbon fiber plate with an ISO layout. It has lubed Duroc V2 stabilizers. I think that's how you say it. I've probably butchered it. It also has a black molded silicon base to help further with noise dampening. And then the keys are the Infinity white on black keys. I may actually change these keys. I haven't decided what I'm going to change them to. I feel like I want a bit of color, but when I say I want a bit of color, what I really mean is different shades of gray. So <laughs> yeah, I don't want it to be all black, um, but it still looks awesome. These keys are super high quality. It looks fantastic. I'd say the only drawback is that it's USB-C only, no Bluetooth connectivity, no battery in it whatsoever, unlike all the other keyboards that we looked at earlier. This is only USB-C, so you have to have it connected up. And usually USB-C, is more reliable anyway. You won't get any Bluetooth issues because I've had Bluetooth issues with all of my keyboards. Um, happens once in a while, but yeah, USB-C only with this one. Okay, so let's get the Keychron and let's compare the two again. So now that we have the Keychron, I mean, they are different layouts. They're not exactly the same layout. As you can see, the Keychron is quite a bit bigger because it has a few more keys, but the difference in materials and quality of finish is just unreal. I mean, the sound of this thing, yeah, it sounds good, but then the sound of this thing, like, it's just night and day, absolutely night and day. I'll do an actual sound test so you can see what it's like.
The Keychron also has low profile switches, so they don't go as far down, but they definitely do, like I said, have, have very much the tactility. These go quite a bit further. So if you're used to using a Magic Keyboard, it might be quite a bit of a jump going to something like this, where the keys are raised up quite a bit. But I feel like you get used to it quite often. And then once you, you get used to it quite often, <laughs> you get used to it. Um, and then once you're used to it and you go back to a low profile keyboard, you feel like it just sort of throws you off. I've gotten used to using both, so I don't mind either or, but obviously I know with this thing, it's just night and day difference. The quality is unreal. So what really are the differences? Why would you spend north of $400, $500 on a keyboard like this when you can just spend $100 on the Keychron? So like I said earlier, it's all about customization and materials. The materials of this thing are night and day difference compared to the Keychron. It's a much higher quality case. The keys are much higher quality. The key set on this, the actual keys, are more expensive than all of the keyboards. That's just the keys, that doesn't even include the keyboard. The silicon base inside the 65 gives a nice dampening, which over time is actually better for your fingers because you're not mashing down on something. There's a bit more of sort of like a softness to it, which people who type a lot will very much appreciate. You can also choose the switches you like. These have the Bobo U4 silent switches, which obviously make it super, super quiet. You can have some sort of customization when it comes to the Keychron and choosing switches, but not as much as something like this, where you can go through basically so many different options and get the one that you like the most, but then you do obviously have to solder it on. So it's quite a bit more work than the Keychron, but with something like this from Mode, it's all about doing it yourself, getting the switches you like, getting the keycaps you like, having it exactly the way you want it so that it suits you. The one benefit I do see with the Keychron is that it's Bluetooth. So being able to connect to different devices, uh, being able to switch between devices, have that wireless sort of connectivity can be a big selling feature for a lot of people, which I completely get. Um, but I think people who are already considering a mechanical keyboard aren't really too fussed with that sort of functionality. So yeah, it really just comes down to, to what you prioritize. So would I recommend it? Of course, if you have the money, I would definitely, definitely recommend the 65, but it's a very, very premium, very, very high-end keyboard. And for most people, the Keychron does make more financial sense, you could say. So it's one of those things where um, it depends how much you appreciate the keyboard. It depends how much you get, how much use you'd get out of it. Um, if you have the money to spend on a customized keyboard, then yeah, I would highly recommend it because this thing is just absolutely fantastic. And one of the best design, most, one of the most well-designed products I've ever used. It really is that good. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter and subscribe for more.